So, yeah, today I'm going to talk about the new XL problem. It's a, it's a name of an older problem that was a XL, just the XL problem. I, it's kind of melted together from previous talks and job talks I had to do. So, uh, hope you all will find it interesting. Uh, yeah, it's basically a long rant. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, we've probably seen a lot of these charts, right? Like, uh, every time there's a new model coming out, and then OpenAI will say, oh, look, we have a better model than the previous time, and then look at all the numbers going up. Uh, so they'll test it on like a lot of those, a lot of their, their, their some of these, uh, what do you call it, those uh, standardized tests, and then they'll show that, okay, we, 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 are, we are achieving better performance than the previous model, uh, and all we did was just make the size bigger, make the data set bigger, and then we can keep doing this forever, and then you'll get AGI. So that's, the, that's, their, that's what they're trying to sell. Okay. So again, same thing, this is Anthropic, <coughs> this is recent, uh, and on the left here within the box, that's Anthropic telling you Claude is the best model ever, and then Claude Opus is the biggest one, and then it has all these great results. Uh, so the leftmost column, I have the biggest number, therefore I have the best model. So that, that's basically, again, the same thing. Um, the, 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 they're trying to sell, like, okay, based on these results, we, we can do a lot, these models are capable of a lot of things, and then again, just more data, more scale. So today, I I'm gonna zoom in on some of these ma ma mathematics-based benchmarks that they have, right? And I mean, they're claiming pretty good results on grade school maths. They can they say they can get 95% on whatever that metric is. Um, so let's test how good it's, you know, maths and arithmetic skills actually are. So this is a this is a, a something that that uh, Cedric decided to ask ChatGPT one day, and I because we're sharing an account, as we, <laughs> because I'm cheap. Uh, I saw this and then I, I look at the result. And I'm like, this is something weird. Okay, so this is ChatGPT's answer. Okay, it, it, you can okay. So I it's, I substituted x for forty percent, and then it gave like pretty good steps, right? Like if you did accounting or I don't know finance or something. It's it's doing it's doing the, the it's giving you pretty good like steps all along the way and then telling you like uh, what formula to use. In fact, it, it, this is e uh, even like a more readable version of the, the actual formula that you use. Um, and then it substitutes the terms all correctly 1.4 and then you know it's root 10 and then it calculates this and then you would think that this part of the, the calculation would be correct. Okay. And then it gives you this final number, and then you're like, yes, I, I didn't have to go and do the calculation myself. Uh, this is the right answer. So let's look at Claude. So Claude gives you this. Okay. Again, it's the same substitution, CGR, blah, 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 and then it's doing the same thing, and then it, it tells you 0 0.04. So th the, the two answers are, are, are different. The correct answer is 3.42%. So there's a discrepancy here. I mean, there's a, there's a, you might, you might assume that this is some kind of like a very minor discrepancy by, by a few, uh, I guess, decimal points, and then so it, it doesn't really matter. But I, what I, what I kind of want to talk about today is the fact that it can't really do maths. So a lot of these models can't really do maths. So let's make it simpler. Um, so this is actually results from a paper, uh, but called from last year, uh, called. Uh, Faith and fate limits of transformers on compositionality, and in this particular plot, what they're trying to show you is that <coughs> if I just if I just train a model on multiplication, and I train it, so so you, you can just think of this as like on the x-axis here, um, the number of digits involved in the multiplication, right? So if I just train it on on up to this point, and then I tested it on 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 examples with more digits, what happens? What happens to the model results? And then it just falls off a cliff. Okay, so generally, uh, whether it's addition, multiplication, uh, you, you generally see these, these, these patterns uh, when it comes to these transformer models, which all of, all of your chat GPT and Opus and all that, they're all built on, on transformers these days. So there's a fundamental problem here that it, it, can't, it just can't do arithmetic. So is it, is it just arithmetic? So let's make it even simpler. Okay, I just want to do one bit addition now. So this is a very stupid problem. Huh? 0 plus 0 equals 0, 0 plus 1, 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and then if 1 plus 1, I carry the 1, and then I don't care what happens to the, to, to the, to the next the significant bit, so I just keep it 0. <coughs> okay. So 
I mean, if you if you just think about it, just okay. If you have zero plus one plus, so it's it's a series of addi additions. The expected output is one, and then if I had two, if I have an even number, basically it, it, it comes out with zero. So if I just have this problem, how well does it do? Actually, it's the same problem. So if you if you if you what 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 this experiment did was uh, if I trained it on sequences of uh, one to forty, um, and then I test it on, on set, uh, sequences longer than that, it falls off a cliff again, and then it, it goes to basically 50%, which is just random. It's just guessing 1 or 0. So the, the result, is, as you can tell, is just 1 or 0, right? So the, anything, anything longer than what it was trained on, it basically just defaults to random. So what's going on here? The, just to recap, uh, the, the, basically now the, the, the current regime is just data is all you need. You don't. You all, all. you need is is to scale up the, the data sets, uh, increase the the, the, mod, the model size, and then you get better, more and more improvements in the uh, in, in the, the results. So uh, this is the kind of mindset that a lot of the, the AI researchers seem to be pushing for. Uh, but I personally think there's like a longer tail of problems that uh, these models are not able to do, and I'm going to talk about a bit of the reason why today. And um, for lack of a better word, you can think of those the, the things that, that we actually want to focus on as reasoning. And this reasoning word is a bit uh, shaky, so like, or it's a bit like uh, not, not well defined. So I'm, I'm thinking of it more as like computation. And I will, uh, I will, I will talk about like why, why these models are actually doing a very, very limited form of computation. So, I want to go back all the way to the start of neural networks, and then um, talk about the actual XOR problem and then how it's related to the to, to, to the to the, the new XOR problem as I, as I call it today. So in the beginning, uh, so that in the beginning there, there was only like a linear linear uh, new sorry one layer neural networks, which basically is a linear classifier, and then um, in 1969 the, these two guys from MIT wrote a book called computational uh, perceptrons, uh, introduction to computational geometry, where they linked uh, basically, uh, I guess geometry with, with computation. Uh, but, but, but essentially what they showed is that um, a simple problem like the XOR problem, uh, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then if you have two ones, then the, the output is, is 0. Uh, a problem like this, you cannot solve using a linear a linear classifier. So a linear classifier, I'll, I'll go through what that is in a minute, but essentially um, a lot of people are attributing to this book uh, the first AI winter. So essentially some, some, what, they, what they publish is that okay the, the perceptrons which were hot, the hot stuff at the time, uh, or you cannot do this simple XOR problem which is in, our, in, I mean, in a lot of our basic uh, circuits in, 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 computa in computation. Uh, so this thing is useless, let's stop doing it. So if you go to wiki page, that's what they'll say. I feel like the truth is a bit more complicated than that, but anyway, yeah, that's that's connected to the first AI winter. So, linear classifier. Um, essentially, linear classifier is given given some. Uh, let's say if you have a two-dimensional space uh, and then you're trying to classify something into into one category or another, can you draw a line through it and then say the first the on one side of that line is category A and on the other side of the line is category B. So in the XOR problem, essentially what you have is if you plotted the inputs uh, that I showed earlier, right, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, on the, onto a two-dimensional plane, then you can see that for, for the all and the n circuits, it's linearly classifiable, classifiable because you, you, have, you, you essentially have the, the zero output on one side of the line and then the, the, the one output on the other side of the line. And then you can do that for the n, the n problem as well. So the only issue is the XOR problem because it has this two things on the opposite sides of the thing. So you need, you need essentially two, two lines to, to classify it. And so what the, the, the way to solve the XOR problem with the neural network is you need two layers. And what that essentially does is it, it, builds, on top, it builds on top of two perceptron, linear perceptrons to build on top of that again. And then you have, you have two layers. And then now you can basically use two lines to, to categorize the, the, the one and zero outputs. And so, there's a there's an underlying thing here of you need depth to to to, to solve some problems. Okay. So what is AI winter? <laughs> there was 
there's been two AI winters, okay, and uh, the, so the, what I, the one I was talking about was at, at the initial phase, uh, about in, in, in 1970s, uh, after the, the Perceptron book got published, and then, you know, there was a lot of hype, and then after, after all the hype died, died, died down, and then people started blaming Minsky for this, this uh, I guess, lack of funding. But a lot of other things stopped being, also had to like fail before people stop stop funding AI research, right? So uh, I I would say that it's a bit more complicated. But anyway, uh, then there was a phase of like symbolic AI that 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 that, that uh, kind of got hyped again, and then that that too died down, and that was in the eighties. So after that, uh, a lot of there were. The, after the, 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 the second phase, basically you had things like a lot of uh, support vector machines, random forests, uh, some of these, these techniques coming out. And then later, then in 20, 2006, Jeff Hinton talked about RPMs, uh, deep learning, stacking up the, the, the neural networks super deep. Uh, then that was deep learning and then now we are here. So my entire existential worry is that this will happen again. <laughs> so okay, so let's 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 go from then to uh, to like I, I'm gonna focus in on where neural networks played a part in uh, natural language processing, uh, and then hopefully from there we can get to the new actual problem. So uh, in the beginning there is there was like the n-gram, and then so essentially what you did was you just counted the frequencies of like in this case let's say we have windows of six words so given the, f the previous five words how often does the this whichever six word uh, occur you can you can frame this into a neural network problem where you give the neural network basically five in five five words input and then it tries to predict the six word and then you can train this neural network across all of your data just like we do today with, with the with, with, with language models um, then later people figured out okay I can do I can do this recurrent um, basically you, you can see from the structure here, essentially, like let's say if I pick this word set, right, it's dependent on the both of its previous words, and then mat is dependent on all of its all of this all of these five previous words. So you can chain these this hidden layer up, and then you can still train that the entire network as a whole. So this 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 was the way you we did things. I think for quite a long while, maybe till 2016, 20, 2017, and um, the. There were, there were some problems with it, I'll, I'll get to it, but essentially I hope it's clear that here that the computational graph essentially is such that you, you, you're, you're building on previous hidden states and then you're, you're kind of uh, conditioned on the previous, the, the, all, all of the previous context as you need it. So this, this could go beyond the six words that I said earlier, right? So in, in, in the beginning, there was just five words, context, and then every time you had to go to the next word, you had to throw away the... the, the, the the first word that you had. So as you go on the mat, then it will just be cat set on the mat and then predict the next word. So here you can keep chaining that up and then you have somewhat infinite context. Okay, then of course, as deep learning people do, they just go deeper. Um, so you stack one more layer on top of that. And then at some point, Google decided, let's make it transformer. So this this transformer is has some nice properties about it, but you can see that from the outside, the structure is similar. Uh, you, you can essentially keep building on these, the, uh, these, the context, and then you still have the same infinite context property to some extent. Uh, but where, where, they, where, where it's different now is that you notice that the, the horizontal dependencies are gone. So, this horizontal dependency is actually making everything slow in RNNs. Um, so if you look at the, 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 the dependency from R to MAT, you can see that it's, 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 it's essentially some uh, Linear function of the amount the amount of words apart from 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 where you're trying to predict to where, to your original input. Whereas if you look at the the transformer, it's easy to parallelize because uh, you can essentially compute every single of these layer all of these layers in parallel, and then so you go just go layer by layer by layer. Number of layers are finite, and then so every in front every training run is essentially the same constant number of. Uh, if you, if you have a basically if you have a GPU. The number of uh, layers you have is essentially the, the, the cost of that computation. So that makes the transformer favorable, favorable uh, and it's favorable for uh, scaling up because of that. Because this is an ON and that is essentially O1. Okay. 
Some people will hate that I say it's 01, but it's parallel. <laughs> okay. So, going back to the one bit addition thing, right? Uh, Bluffy one. So this is actually parity, the parity problem. Uh, if I flip the, basically if I flip the output from, from zero to one and one to zero, um, essentially it's this other very uh, common problem in computer science of the, is a parity problem where uh, even, essentially I give you a, a, a binary string and then I want to know um, is there an even number of uh, one, one bits in the bi binary string. So if you look at the previous problem, essentially what, what is, what, what's happening is that you, you're, you're basically counting uh, whether there's a, oh, I think I flipped the, the thing wrongly. Uh, but anyway, the, it, the, the problem is the same, whether the, whatever the, the label is, you're, you're essentially trying to classify it one way or the other. So even one odd zero. Uh, so again, remember that the transformer performed very poorly on this task. So just to circle back to the XL problem and how it's connected to the parity problem, right? Um, essentially, the, the parity problem you can you can chain them up, uh, so you're essentially doing a reduce. For all those of you that like functional programming, uh, you're doing a reduce on the on the binary string with the XOR gate, and then you negate the output, and then that's the you, you basically solve the parity problem that way. So that also means that I can take the neural network circuit that you saw earlier, and then I just do a reduce, and then I will have solved the parity problem that way. So one thing I want you to notice here is that. The depth, the, essentially this is a, like a recurrent neural network, and the depth here is linear in the size of the string. Okay? So we don't like linear, right? As we saw earlier, everybody want to use transformer. So can we make it more shallow? Uh, so yes, if you actually want to solve it, you can make it more shallow, uh, and then you can do this thing where you build a binary tree, and then so if you think back to your CS3230, I think, uh, the, the, the depth, the depth, the depth of the yes, you can remember. <laughs> so the depth of the, the tree is is log n in the in the sequence. So your your depth is still dependent on the length of the string. So this can't be that solved in finite depth. So there's something weird here with the with the transformer. Um, and then so to belabor the point even more, so. Parity is a finite state. Uh, you can solve it with a finite state machine. Uh, so essentially, it's a two-state finite state machine, and you all you have to do is, uh, let's say, let's say you're you are you are you or you're a kid or whatever, and then you're and I'm giving you zero series of zeros and ones and ones and zeros and ones. All you have to do is to just keep track. How many is that? I have I seen an odd or even number of ones so far, and then every time you hear a one, you just flip it. Every time you hear a zero, you just ignore me, and. That would essentially solve the, ex the, the the parity problem. So again, you or a kid could solve this fairly easily. So this is not like a. I mean, a common argument I hear is that kids can uh, uh, humans don't solve parity anyway. Um, yeah, unless ah uh, yeah okay you can sit there and do it until you go to the toilet okay. And then so based on that the, the I'm not sure if you all have seen this but essentially this is the the Chomsky hierarchy and finite state automata is at the one of the lowest rung of the, the, the Chomsky hierarchy. So where where your 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 uh, the expressibility of what your your programming languages can do these days is is supposed to be Turing complete. Again, some people argue with me about this, but we can argue later. So it's it's supposed to be Turing complete, and where parity is, it's a it's basically a finite automaton. So now you're starting to see like the transformer can't solve regular languages, which is a little bit weird. Um, and then another. Interesting academic point is that uh, the finite state automata. Apparently, there is a there's a there's a theorem that it says that you can factorize any co sufficiently complicated finite state automata into a m modulo counter and uh, a memory unit. So, parity is actually a very uh, simple form of the modulo counter. You are essentially doing modulo two. So you're counting every time you see a one bit, you're essentially counting one and then. You see another one bit, you can't go back to zero. So, I mean, if it's module three, basically you go one, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So, it's a it's the simplest form of the modular counter, and so that basically any any of the the uh, regular languages that require the parity the 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 modular counter, uh, transformer has a has trouble with. Okay. 
And again, if you still think that the state is not needed, uh, the types of problems that, that, that this type of state tracking require, uh, that uh, requires this kind of state tracking is similar to these, these, these types of problems where you know, you're, you're, you have a bunch of boxes, you shift the, the items around, and then at the end of the thing, I ask you what's inside this box. Uh, so, Transformers has is have issues with these types of problems as well. So, if, you, if you're thinking of like, uh, as a narrative, it needs to tell a story, then it needs to figure, it needs to keep track of like where, where this character is, what the character is doing, or if you're trying to write code, then possibly you need to have some abstract reasoning of like, uh, what is in this variable at this current point in time. So, to, to me, a lot, a lot of the, the, the things that people want to use uh, the language models for, they kind of require this. So, uh, up to this point, um, the, basically the, the problem with the new XL problem is that the transformers are finite depth. And uh, so, yeah, if we build on some of these, uh, if you, so I, I'm sorry. Uh, the there's a lot of these. Uh, you know, sorry. In order to in order to, to be able to solve uh, length length L uh, kind of uh, finite state automata automata problems, actually there's a general result that, that 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 says that you need to you need to have be in log uh, log L in depth of the, the entire sequence. So. Uh, <coughs> The fact that the transformer is a finite depth, it's gonna be not be able to, to, to solve a lot of these uh, finite state automata problems. Yeah. So that's the that's the, the I guess the problem statement. So uh, from this point to the next few slides, it's gonna be a bit more like researchy. Uh, so the I guess that to if you want to start paying attention again after all the researchy stuff, you'll see a ostrich on the on the slide, and then you can pay attention again. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. So th there's a, some theoretical work that talks about this. I'm gonna go through one of the small, simpler, simpler uh, uh, theoretical, I guess, proofs of reasoning uh, that, that 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 talks about why the, the transformers cannot solve parity. And then I'm gonna talk about one of the em empirical results where they basically just test the transformers on a whole bunch of formal language uh, kind of lang formal language sequences, and then show that it basically sucks. Um, so, for for this first one, so for those of you that know what a transformer is, right? So there's, there's this notion of attention, and each transformer block has an attention hit, has multiple attention hits. So in this example here, for example, right, I have uh, I have a sequence of eight bits, and then each each transformer block has two hits. So if I have two layers stacked up like this, and each transformer has two hits, then there's going to it's going to miss out one of the input, uh, if I assume that transformers always attend to only one thing. Okay. So as I, as, I, as, I increase the, if, as I increase the length of the, the input, it's going to miss out at least one of the, 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 the bits. And then if that bit is a one, it's going to flip the, the, the output. And then it's always going to give the wrong answer. So that's the, the, the simplest version of the, the, the reasoning. Uh, so uh, as you can see, this assumes a lot of things about uh, attention that is, you know, it's always, it's, they call it hard attention because it's only attending on one thing. Uh, but there are similar results here that basically relax that even that assumption and then still show that it still fails. So if you, if you imagine that the transformer can dynamically increase the, 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 the depth based on the input length, then you can, you, you can basically see how it can increase that, 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 uh, the, the, the sequence the input sequence that you can see, and then you can basically give the, you can generalize to give the correct answer. So that's the Han version of the, the argument. And so this other paper, this is the, the uh, empirical result. So what they did here is they took all of these different weird uh, kind of neural networks, including the RNN and LSTM transformer, if these are familiar to you, good. Uh, and they, Tested it on all different levels of the, the, the Chomsky hierarchy, you know, the examples of the sequences from, from different levels of the Chomsky hierarchy. And then they try to put, make it, put in a taxonomy of, 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 uh, of the, the Chomsky hierarchy. And that's, the, that, that's, that's where this, this slide came from. This, this, that, that, that plot is actually from this paper. 
and this is the parity problem. Um, the entire the entire sequence of the, the, the all this this is basically the regular languages. So there's the finite state automata, and then this is uh, context sensitive. So essentially, all you need to know is that this, as you look down the the the, the, the table here, it, the tasks get harder and harder. And so you can see that for the regular languages, all the RNN based uh, models, you can see how it's connected because the the you're basically updating the state, which is what the finite state automata does. Every time it sees an input, it changes the state. Uh, so RNNs can do very well on, on, on regular languages because they are based on finite state automata and the transformer just dies at everything except sorting <laughs> <laughs> there's a good reason for it if you, think, if you can think about it but uh, yeah essentially it, it, it what are human brains? huh? human brains? Uh, I, I don't know <laughs> I'll leave that to later so um, if, if, if you're doing research on, on uh, uh, neural networks or, or deep learning or AI or whatever people call it now. Um, there, there's a very interesting uh, kind of student uh, interest group that's like kind of distributed all over the world and they are, they are doing, they, they have like often, they, they have uh, talks and, and seminars every, I don't know, once a month or something. And uh, yeah, you can join them here and they, it's kind of a niche because it's, a, it's, a, it's formal languages and neural networks. So generally, People who do neural networks don't care about formal languages, which is a shame. But yeah. So okay. So just to be clear, what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about today is um, is about expressibility. So if you are thinking, I what if I just throw more data of the parity problem at the transformer, will it suddenly emergently learn learn the learn learn how to do do parity? So what I'm talking about here is expressibility, and I'm, what I'm trying to say is that the transformer cannot express the parity uh, language or problem. And so the, the kinds of arguments that you see in, in, in expressibility claims are usually theoretical, uh, and then they involve like a lot of assumptions, like for example, I gave you an example just now, the, the, the attention is assumed to be hard attention. Um, and so the way people dismiss it is usually, okay, the assumptions suck, so I don't care about your, your theory. Uh, so that's, that's the sh kind of contour of what expressibility arguments look like. And then generally what you see these days is, is le questions of le learnability. So given I have the transformer now, what can I make it learn? And then that's usually empirical. Uh, I, I test it on this data, that data, and then see, see, see what I can, I can make it learn. So what is learnable is if we had a, the true notion of what, what is expressible, then what is learnable is always inside the set of what is exp expressible. And that, so what I'm trying to say here is that this parity problem, you cannot throw more data in to learn, the, to, 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 to learn it. Uh, the, the fundamental structure of the, the, the architecture needs to be changed. Okay, off three. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so what, what are the ways we can solve it, right? Um, so essentially, based on discussion, like I'm, 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 I'm from one of the, the deep learning labs and I talk to people about this problem and then they, they just tell me, look at the current results, so good, why we need to do more things. So one thing you can do is essentially to, to just uh, pretend the problem doesn't exist. And I think you might be able to get quite far with it given the current results, um, but uh, I, I also think that there's there's certain limitations that being kind of like we're, we're, we're being obscured from because we, we don't we don't actually see the actual the issues. Um, but yeah, so for example, one of the theory papers suggested that uh, oh we, we can we should actually start thinking about uh, using this new form of uh, circuit complexity analysis that I talked about earlier in the, the previous slides uh, that. Uh, to, to kind of analyze language in, rather than the, the whole old uh, Chomsky hierarchy view. Uh, and perhaps we don't even need the infinite depth, we just need the finite depth and then we can mo model most things. So I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to this, but uh, that's definitely one thing you can do. Just, by the way, this is from the OS textbook. I don't know if you all see this. Andrew Tenenbaum, I think. So I think if he was talking about deadlocks and then you can pretend deadlocks don't exist and then continue coding as if that's the ostrich algorithm. Hide your head in the sand and then pretend the problem doesn't exist. 
So uh, the other one, I'm, uh, so I, I'm going to talk about two more things that actually try to solve the problem. Uh, and my, my preferred solution is to change the architecture. And then so one of the things you can do is, if you still want to use a transformer architecture, you can kind of just have a transformer that dynamically increases the depth as you, as you as it looks at the, the, the uh, input. So this has already been done by Google, but uh, due to variety of different scaling issues, people have not taken this up as, as the, the substrate of a lot of the language models. But I think my, my personal work is basically to, to try to, 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 to get these things to scale up uh, and hopefully some other things. But yeah, uh, th this is one of the, the, the things I'm interested in. And if you test it on parity, you can actually get it to, to generalize, but still not very well. Um, so again, I, if you see the blue line here, that's basically uh, me redoing the, the experiment from the, 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 the paper with parity. And you see the same thing where it drops off after, after the, 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 what, what you see in the training set. But if you use the universal transformer, then um, you, you can kind of generalize a little bit more. Uh, but recall that the, for, for in the case of the RNN, this basically gets 100% uh, generalization. So even, even with the universal transformer, this is still facing issues. So there's, a, there's some, I mean, there's more work needed here, but not great. So what's the other thing? So this thing you might be more familiar with, maybe not by this name, but uh, essentially what, what a lot of people, the way people, a lot of people use uh, the chat GPT now is they tell it to think step by step. And in fact, I think they may have been training it to, to automatically do this thing step by step uh, thing uh, through you know, reinforcement learning through human feedback. But essentially, if you, if you try to quantify theoretically what, what these things, including chain of thought can express, then you can, you can essentially get, be, become theory complete. So you essentially just think of the, the, the working, right? So what, what is chain of thought? You, you ask it the problem sum. And then it's like in primary school where your teacher asks you to do to show your working. So this is essentially just showing your working, talking about talking through every step of the 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 the, the problem that you had to solve, and then giving the final answer at the end. So you're you're basically allowing it to, to increase its depth by by producing more and more tokens, and then you can think of the the the, the intermediate generation as kind of during machine tape. And then so you can just keep generating, generating, generating until you reach the final answer. Okay. So how well does this do for parity? It's it it does it it improves it a little bit better, um, but there's a few problems with the kind of like uh, the way the way the results are presented. So I will still not consider it solved uh, because first of all it's a very simple problem, and people are just generally testing it up to length. 20 or length 40, whereas in the previous example, they went up to, to 500. So uh, you, can, you can get it to do better. And, uh, and I've actually had an example, apparently on Twitter, uh, where someone gave me a prompt that actually produced the, the right answer. So let's talk about that. First, there is a... <laughs> there, there's, so this, this, is a, this is another theoretical result from, from, uh, from uh, Merrill and Chawawa. And what, what, they, what they claim is that um, if you want to reproduce a, a regular language with chain of thought, so with this step-by-step -step generation, you essentially have to generate uh, some function. Of, so so if, your, if your input sentence is n, your, your output sentence is some, function, some linear function of n uh, in order to get the correct answer. So it's not cheap to, to generate this. Uh, and and if you want it to if you if you need to go up the the Chomsky hierarchy let's say then you start having to 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 pay more and more for the for for that generation and then remember that they charge you by the tokens so for parity right you can you can essentially make it trace out the the trace of 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 going through the states and what that means is essentially you can see how it's linear, right? Because the, the every single step, every single step it has to, to like, okay, step one, I did this, the, 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 my internal state flip to zero, flip to one, flip to zero, flip to one. So you have to, he gave it, uh, the, someone on Twitter gave me this very complicated prompt which essentially works. Uh, but if I increase the length long enough, it just starts talking to itself without ever stopping. So 
Uh, there's a length limit, but this is the best problem I've seen so far for, for the parity problem. And then just remember you have to pay for every single token. <laughs> okay, so I think I've rushed through the, 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 the talk a little bit, but uh, I've anticipated some questions that I've heard over my many conversations, so I'm going to go through some of them. So, some people will just test on one number, and then they say, hey, this number works, so you're wrong. So that doesn't really work because you, you kind of want to, th these kind of things you need to do a little bit of statistical testing. So I kind of cheated earlier in the talk when I, when I did one example of thing, something failing. Uh, but generally what you really want to do, if, especially if you're running a, a, a company base that's based on, on some of these AI methods, uh, you really want to, to do like a, some kind of statistical testing on different things, uh, uh, different scenarios, and then um, Having edge cases, especially to, to make sure that you, you you cover all the kinds of input that that you you might see. So uh, the, the the task here is to learn when, is to is to ask if the if transformer can learn the algorithm to solve problem. And what I'm trying to say is that it can't. Uh, and yeah, so you you, you in, in this particular kind of algorithmic kind of problems also you really want to see whether it can generalize way beyond what you saw in the data. Just like when you write code, you test on, on smaller cases, but then you, you hope that the bigger cases, and then when you submit it to whatever marking system you have, uh, it still works. So human, just I talked about this already. Humans can't solve the pro parity problem anyway, so uh, why, why, why do we do this? So like I said, we can solve a streaming version of the parity problem, uh, and then we I think we do much more complex state tracking in our daily lives, which basically is what the parity problem is trying to, to, to demonstrate. Uh, so. I don't think this is really valid uh, because what I'm really trying to talk about here is parity is just a symptom of the problem. Uh, there's an underlying kind of cause that is, is actually the real disease that we need to fix. And this is, the, yeah, so not being able to solve parity is, is just one of the, problem, the, the symptoms that you have. Um, yeah, so this is another one. Why, why don't we just get GPT to write the code to do this? This is quite valid. Uh, but I think it, what we're trying to do is, again, probe for the capability to track state. Uh, so it's, it's not really that, that we, we cannot solve the parity problem itself. This is, again, mistaking what the, the symptom and the, the disease is. But uh, yeah, like if you can't solve parity, then you can't do more complicated state tracking, which is what we actually want. And there's a more meta problem of like, what if you want to write a code and that writing the code itself requires uh, that higher level of, of uh, being in the higher level of the Chomsky hierarchy. Okay, so another thing is like, why won't, won't AI eventually solve this? Yes, I think if I had my way, then universal transformers would be the thing, and then you can solve this eventually. But the, the point here is about the current substrate of the, the uh, what, what we're using as ChatGPT and all that nowadays, which is the, transform, the, the basic transformer architecture. And that's where the problem lies. So that's what the problem I'm trying to address is. Uh, don't ask me this. This one, I, I think, my, in my opinion, we are at least finite state automata. Uh, and I, other than that, I, I can't tell you what understanding means, what thinking means, what any of it means. Uh, if you want to prepare for Skynet, just go and prepare for Skynet. Okay, so yeah, so we're at the end. Um, yeah, so just to recap, large language models, I think we, there's still a lot of uh, issues with some of the these compositional tasks and uh, the parity task is like kind of like just to showcase what types of problems it cannot express uh, so I think knowing that it's still, it's still important to pay attention to the, the type of model architectures uh, that we use so instead of just focusing on training data which seems to be the thing nowadays uh, that, that there's some expressibility issues that we, we are facing with the, with the, the underlying architecture so uh, I think there's also like some uh, in interesting research problems just just in with talking about the architecture itself and maybe also to do with uh, chain of thought and how you do chain of thought. Uh, and yeah, I think, I think the, the backbone of this future machine learning model is not finalized yet, but it's slowly creeping towards the point where people are designing specialized hardware for it, which is a bit scary. Uh, but I think there's more work to be done, so if you're doing research in this, I, it's hard to encourage you to go and explore other architectures because 
people will people will fight you for it, uh, which I have experienced. But uh, I think that's good for the general case. So yeah, thanks. Uh, that one just buy, buy, buy. <laughs> you do other things also, you still need NVIDIA GPU, so. Essentially, what this is is the 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 every block of the transformer in the universal transformer is the same is has shared parameters, so you're repeating the same block over and over and over again. And let's say now you had a twelve layer transform uh, transformer, and then you wanted to have a universal transformer of the same number of parameters as the. You need twelve times the parameters in that one universal transformer block as the, the, the universal transformer. And then now, the way these things are trained is that you, you basically shard the, the, the 12 blocks across, across different machines. But now you can't. Your entire one block of transformer is going to have to live inside your, your, your one GPU or one node. And then so scaling this up so that it reaches the size of like whatever 7 billion just the llama, right, is going to be tough because of these scaling issues. So that's why people haven't been doing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, but the answer is just not to build more infrastructure, right? It's to rethink the uh, I, I think, I, so, so this is kind of like after years of doing research and what people are willing to take, pick up, right? So if you, if you make too drastic of a change to your architecture, no one is going to care. So you have to, you have to be like, this is the current, state and then you go like, hey you like this? You, you like this? You like this? So so this is this is a, a small enough step away from transformers that I think people will accept. Okay. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about Mamba? Uh, <laughs> do people know what Mamba is? <laughs> okay, so the, people are trying to reintroduce um, so this is where we are now, and then this is what it used to be, right? So people are trying to take this and then merge it with this, and then you get this weird chimera of, of these two things. Um, but they are trying to cheat. So here, in between every single update, there's a non-linearity, uh, which is the thing that gives you the special XOR properties and everything. But uh, in, in the current version of this recurrence, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make it a linear transform. And then once you make it a linear transform, you can make it parallel again by making turning that linear transform into a, I don't know if you all know what this is, the convolution. So if you can do that transformation, basically you're still back here. So that means you still have the same problem as you did before. So the recurrence, the re the recurrence from things like Mamba or these linear recurrent networks are not actually truly giving you recurrence. Yeah. That's an inside baseball thing, but... Sorry, uh, can you show the graph regarding the generalization of the UT on okay. the What are your suspicions as to why it's not? Uh, okay, Ken. So this, this, okay, just, just to make it clear, this, uh, this purple line here is transformer. Everything else here is squished, is all, is all of these other things. <laughs> it's not the upper border of the plot, okay? If you have, if you have just an RNN, uh, and you have a finite state automata, you know it will solve it in, you know it will have to answer the question in n steps, whatever long, however long the, 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 the length of the sequence is. 
So there is no additional decision for the, the RNN to make. It's at, at the end of the N steps, it needs to decide what state am I in and then can I can I output. In the in the universal transformer, I have to learn this as additional mechanism of when to ice how many how, how many what the depth is I have to stop. And right, what because there's no more input. Yeah, that you have to learn it like yeah. latently, like uh, I I need to be able to figure it out from the data. And the way the way the universal transformer actually solves this problem is to by make, making a recur recurrent neural network, yeah, like like this. Tuck, 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 tuck. So so it has to figure out that it has to to to, to stop at n depth, and that's that's not easy once you you start pushing it beyond the the, the amount of data that you learn. Uh, pe yeah, a lot of people starting to do that with the map, like, so, I think, yeah, yeah, okay, so, so, I mean, that's a different type of thing, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you could, you could have this, like, alternating layers, which is, if you look at the recent thing, uh, I think, Gemini, recursive Gemini, or whatever, oh, right, the they, thing. yeah, 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 but those are, like, interleaved in the model architecture, correct, Correct. So, so I think that's actually a better approach, but the problem with that is that the, the is what I just talked about, the map with the mamba, yeah. It's actually the mamba. They you just win. Everybody just want to name their own thing. It's the same one. Yes. Could you talk about what it is with and without halting? Um, okay. So halting, I, 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 I so okay, this is a this is a bit of a my, my own my own testing, right? I I was trying to to, to test my, my own mechanism of uh, the halting mechanism here. Like you can you can see that it decides when to stop. Um, so I had a version of the the the, the uh, universal transformer where it essentially just always computes the same maximum depth, uh, and then this is what happens. But what is the maximum depth? So I, I had to okay in order to train this in order to actually train this this thing right, yeah. you have to decide a maximum depth during training, I see. and then during testing you can let it do whatever you want. I see. Uh, that's the, the 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 problem. Yeah, part of the problem with training universal right. transformers also. Is that then a hyperparameter or something? Yeah. Okay. And that will Too many your training by a lot. Um, I mean you so so nowadays let's say if you want to train a big model maybe thirty two layers or whatever, so you just you can just do parameterize the universal transformer and then you just pick the different layers. Uh, but the problem goes back to the one he asked earlier, right? Like if if you have if you have if you want to have the same size as thirty two layers, then you have to thirty two times the original transformer block, then your block become very big. Yeah. Then you want to run that for thirty two layers, then it's thirty two times thirty two. And and you're saying you cannot divide by thirty two the the block size. It it doesn't so that's part of one of the things I was trying to do. Uh, yeah, but but essentially that's you can put mixture of experts and then you can divide that up.